By the last decade of the 19th century, the dominant role of the Impressionist trend was over. In this period of post-Impressionism, several great names appeared in France, Cézanne, Van Gogh, Gauguin, that foreshadowed the giddy changes in the art of the near 20th century. Their work was not appreciated for its true worth by their contemporaries. Such a painting as Young Girl at the Piano by Cézanne displays no obvious connections with Impressionist conception, which the artist followed in the late 1860s, except in its exaggerated non-academical manner and the modern subject. A room in the native house of the artist at Aix-en-Provence, with figures of his mother sitting on a sofa and his sister at the piano. The color palette was dark and heavy and was distant from the luminous colors of the Impressionists. Even in the circle of his associates, this strange provincial was an outsider, as well as at salons where his paintings were not accepted, being always rejected with great indignation. While working at plein air with Pissarro, at Pontus and Auvers, Cézanne absorbed the Impressionist technique. There he painted his self-portrait, represented as a bearded, shaggy man with a fevered look whose face was aged prematurely because of inner storms and solitude. The Impressionist technique could not banish the strong originality of Cézanne. He was capable of endowing his canvases with the heat of the southern noon and the freshness of mountain air. His analysis of color and tone, combined with strong, short brush strokes, created not only the interplay of light and shadows sliding along the tree trunk and over the grass and yellow soil, he considered color as a means of modeling and can perceive the inner force of this tree with its twigs and dense needles of the soil, mountains, and air of Provence. Cézanne's color is the living substance of all objects. The soft apples, his favorite motif, dense fabrics and stiff napkins in his still life piece. The living personages display the same powerful material substance as we can see in the strong figure of the peasant, whose brick red face, burnt with sun, reminds us of the soil or the old houses in Provence, and whose heavy hands call to mind the matured fruits from the trees cultivated by these hands. Impregnated with the powerful forces of the earth, he is an integral part of nature itself, and this personage needs no proper name, which is why he is only Pipe Smoker, an image of a man as a creation of nature. Vincent van Gogh entitled this picture Memory of the Garden at Etten to recall his native house in Holland. In the surroundings of southern nature we can see the women's figures, one of which is that of a Dutch peasant woman. Everywhere, in northern and in southern lands, only women's hands make the earth fertile and flowering, the painter seems to say. Every object in Van Gogh's painting is handled as an expression of his own extremely restrained emotionalism. This picture, with a contorted lilac bush against the intense blue sky, was painted in Van Gogh's late period, during the short improvement in his condition after his first serious attack of mental illness.
This is one of the last works of Van Gogh, painted not long before his early death. The landscape, with its highly intense palette and noticeable twisted strokes, is imbued with an anxious feeling, suggesting the painter's tragic, perturbed state of mind. On the canvas, one can read the usual Tahitian greeting written by the painter himself. It means only, where do you go? But the painter obviously turned this simple local greeting into a general question of deep philosophical meaning. Here is represented a woman bearing a fruit, as if she was the Tahitian Eve of this earthly paradise. evidently saw his task not in the visual description of Tahitian cults, but in the rendering of their inner spiritual force. In his painting, we perceive the density of tropical twilight with the reddish flame of a sunset, the mobility of night shadows, the hidden life of trees and stones surrounding the idol of this place. Le Pastoral Tahitienne was the title given to this painting by the artist himself. The soft harmony of color, as if it was flamed up by the tropical sun, and the barely noticeable movement, suggested by smooth linear rhythm, are subdued here seemingly to the low melody of the Tahitian flute, which holds the swarthy Tahitian woman. Tahitian landscape with a spring is inhabited by two symbolic images, the haloed Mary and Eve holding the fruit of the downfall. The harmony of the subdued tones seems to embody the mystery of unity with Mother Nature, in which all differences between cultures and races are diffused. This canvas is one of the works painted by Gauguin on the island of St. Dominique in the last years of his life. In its subdued, gloomy tonality and mysterious, symbolic imagery, the painting evokes the feeling of nostalgia and weariness of life. In the 1880s, Degas worked mainly in the pastel technique. After Bathing is one of the early pastel paintings in the famous series of Degas bathers. He was endowed equally with a sense of precise line and structural design, and with a deep feeling for soft consonances of color, which the pastel technique provided him in great degree.
This is Paris seen from a hotel window on a warm spring day in 1898. Pizarro's brushwork, with small strokes of pure colors, not only renders the imperceptible aerial haze and the crowd's movement, but also forms the main structural elements, the high buildings and the vast perspective of the boulevard. This painter liked a black tone as deep as exquisite velvet and widely used it in order to emphasize the brilliance of young women's eyes, as well as the subtle graduated shades on luminous white skin. In the light conception of Impressionism, as this picture of Renoir reveals, black is a paraphrase of light, for it is penetrated with numerous hues. Thanks to this purely musical rhythm of luminous color spots, the painter created an image full of tender reverie. All forms, clothes, hair, background patterns, and the fan itself seemingly exist only in order to enframe, as if they accompany the major musical motif, the face of this girl that is like a flower in its beauty. This work is one in a series of portraits of Jean Samarie by Renoir. He handled her image in different ways, but always as if she was woven of a specter of tinted light. In the Hermitage full-length portrait, we see the actress in gala costume, as if she is ready to go out dressed in compliance with the latest fashion of the time. We can see in this model one of the first significant works from Rodin's hand. This famous statue caused a storm of indignation from the critics and on the part of the public at the Salon of 1878 because of its faithfulness to nature. This statue became a starting point of Rodin's renown as a great innovator who could open new ways for European sculpture. In hard stone, Rodin was able to render impetuous gusts of passion as if they burst into eternity. Rodin's art brought together two major artistic conceptions of that time, those of Impressionism and Symbolism. its complicated knot of tense and passionate spirituality, strong will, and cold self-restraint. This daring look, tousled hair, and strange proletarian hat pulled over his eyes could signify a challenge to the world.
There was only one factor, the imagery of Wagner's music, that could inspire the severe rhythm, forceful planes, and dark, subdued tonality of this picture. Character of the surface and Cezanne's brushwork itself gives the impression of powerful creative forces boiling in nature and in human activity. This energy emerges in the forms of this still life, in evidently tense relations between juicy fruits, the earthenware jug with its clear brilliance, and the sumptuous fabric with its low voice. The painter seemingly made the individual here represent a type, the man of Provence, bound to its fertile earth and sun-bleached mountains as firmly as a tree. Along with this major theme, the painter punctuated also the inner state of this man immersed in his own thoughts of reverie. Cézanne loved to paint this old tree in the vicinity of his native Aon Provence. For him, it embodied the creative powers of the sun and the earth of Provence. In this picture, one of the most impressive in his work, it appears as a forceful symbol of life itself. When seeing the figurine of the Italian Renaissance sculptor in one of the rooms of the Autumn Salon of 1905, the critic Louis Vossel explained, Donatello among the Forbes, because the paintings of young artists which were hung in this room were all painted with violently bright colors, absolutely free from any standards. From that moment, those artists were called the Fauve, or wild beasts experimenting with pigments and following thus the traditional formal bent of the French art, the Fauve made important discoveries in the sphere of color, which was one of the starting points of modern painting. The Fauve as an artistic trend, the first one in the history of modern art, had a short life, but it gave an impetus for such great artists of the 20th century as Henri Matisse, as well as for other important artists, Darin, Vleminck, Marquet, Van Dongen. In Vleminck's work, View of the Seine, an ordinary landscape motif was transformed into a really severe image, imbued with dramatic force and passion. The bohemian atmosphere of the artistic Montmartre determined forever the extremely bold and spectacular brushing characteristic of Kees Van Dongen. In his painting, Lady in the Black Hat, we see the image of the free and proud, dangerous if not fatal woman. Pictorial space of the huge canvas seems to be tensed, so actively the green pushes the blue to the upper border. Against the green, the red-pink bodies are represented as if they are set against the blue. Elastic as tensed springs, they are charged with force and fire, strengthened by the green background. The main objects of this painting are the colors themselves. 
The painting Music by Henri Matisse was a strikingly simple and at the same time magnificent and visually convincing expression of the idea revealing the act of artistic endeavor. It was also a great wall decoration, and it marked the beginning of a period of monumental painting, which was restored to life by Matisse, who used the means of modern art. Matisse painted the picture Music for a renowned collector from Moscow. Sergei Ivanovich Shukin, Shukin initiated a number of motifs in the work of Matisse. Once he proposed to portray the artist's family with Madame Matisse and their three children. So the family portrait appeared, and the commissioner, endowed with rare taste, appraised it very highly. In this work, the portrayed reality was subordinated to an elegant artistic arrangement of form and joyful color patterns, penetrated with a purely musical rhythm and inner spirituality so characteristic of Matisse's work. The early work, Two Sisters, by Pablo Picasso, is imbued with a gloomy emotional aura. The only tone, the cool blue, laid on the canvas very densely, dominates in the painting as if to express the state of cold disappointment and somber despair. The ascetic figures, confined in their rigid outlines, are built up of this persistently monochrome color material. These women are tragically desolate but they maintain their Spanish pride and demeanor. The composition in the painting by André Darren, harbor in Provence of 1913, is built of geometrical forms. Here we can see the clear, simple, and severe beauty, based on the logical compositional order when expressing the creative unity of nature and a man. Two-dimensional color planes converging inside are the main elements in the monumental and tense construction of the figure in the painting of 1908, Lady with a Fan, by Picasso, revealing his first steps toward Cubist conception. In his attempt to find a new method which allowed him to reveal the inner construction of things and the phenomena within pictorial forms, Picasso was much influenced by the exaggerated rough forms characteristic of Negro art an ancient Iberian sculpture. It was the starting point of Cubism, a new artistic trend which was initiated by Picasso and Brach, and then developed also by their friends, Gris, Delaunay, and Darain, who departed from the Fauve. Pierre Bonnard made an attempt to depart from naturalistic tendencies in use of color, characteristic of the Impressionist conception. In his picture, Early Spring, Bonnard chose a principle of punctuated decorativeness. When rendering the cold light of the early spring days, he enhanced the lower key color by subordinating the color composition to surface factor. This image of woman's beauty, which is free and dangerous, if not demonic, reminds us of the free artistic atmosphere of Montmartre. Van Dongen's painting, which seems so audacious and unrestrained, could be inspired by any real person he met in the artistic circles of that time.
The simple and ordinary city motif, with a view of the Seine in the Parisian suburb of Chateau, was treated by the painter as a severe image penetrated with sharp dramatic fever. We can perceive the gloomy and perturbed state of mind which underlay this landscape. The painter seemingly searched after a simple, severe, extremely logical and precise beauty, which would be created by nature or by man's hand. He used geometrical forms, close to a conception of cubism, as well as the intense, pure pigments that were particularly loved by the Fauve. The red hue, which stands so sharply against the intense green and blue tones of the background, signifies in the imaginative world of Matisse the innate power of man creating music on the eternal green earth under the equally eternal blue sky. Man borrows his energy from nature, says the picture of Matisse, for he embodies it in art. There is another work on this theme in the Hermitage collection, the big picture, Dance. This picture seems to recall the miraculous and fabulous aura of the Orient. It calls to mind a highly decorative and oriental tapestry or any Persian illuminated book. So intertwined are the intricate patterns of extremely enhanced black, red and yellow that outline the figures of the wife, daughter and sons of the painter. Almost cubist planes dominate in the treatment of the woman's figure. All the edges of these planes converge inwards, except those of the fan, opening outwards. Such a grotesque rendering borders on the tragic. In spite of the monumentalism of the forms, this figure suggests extreme inner tension. Being locked within the outline of the armchair, this lady with a fan remains shrunk into herself. The motif chosen here by Picasso was rather trivial, a meeting of two sisters, one of whom became a prostitute and the other a nun, but the gloomy and rigid vaults above their heads seem to be of the same material their bodies are made of. The arch created by both closing figures is solid enough to withstand the vaults hanging over them, as if they embodied the difficulties of human destiny and life. At the root of this painting of a battle of wild animals in the jungle lay the artist's impressions of his visits only to the zoo, for he never left Paris. 
his artistic mind used and melded into new actuality popular motifs of the postcards of that time. But first of all, he had an innate, immediate, and purely childish imagination. <laughs> ¶¶